our prestigious next speaker dr rita please give a warm welcome to dr rita ma'am hello ma'am hello good evening uh, from india and greetings to everybody uh, around the globe and uh, thanks for everyone who's come online to watch us and hear us out i am truly privileged to be a part of this show and uh, very very humbled to be amongst such wonderful speakers who have done so much in their life and are uh, illuminating themselves and the people around uh, them and the world and leading the way um leading is of course uh, something that we when we say we are global leaders uh, in today's world the world indeed is one small family we have said it in india earlier that uh, we say vasudhaiva kutumbakam and vasudha is the earth and kutumb is a family the earth is indeed a family i am extremely uh, grateful to dr caroline makaka who has uh, uh, you know helped me to uh, spread out to uh, this platform because uh, it is through her that you know we 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 we, we come forward and uh, talk about what we have done in our lives and uh, she's been uh, really truly very very phenomenal and a very very inspiring leader in its truest sense uh, as a leader i must say that whatever we do in our lives in our little ways uh, we are adding to the collective consciousness of the universe and that really manifests itself and uh, spreads out and somehow we see it all coming back to us I am Dr. Rita Jairath. I am uh, an IFBB Pro uh, athlete, international athlete. IFBB is the International Federation of Bodybuilding. I am one of the first few women from India to compete internationally. I am very grateful and very proud that I have represented India on world stage and um, actually put women's bodybuilding on the world stage. uh as i when i started there was there were hardly any women <coughs> competing and uh, after uh, nearly two decades now of uh, exercise and training i am now an ifbb pro international uh, judge and uh, so uh, very, i'm very very grateful that um, i am today uh, you know because i have been there right since uh, so many years i'm able to show the light and uh, help Uh, and mentor a lot of women athletes who come forward not just in bodybuilding but also in fitness and uh, uh, health and wellness um in in india it's very very relevant because uh, uh, the health and fitness uh, of women in india is uh, very very compromised uh, because uh, women have been uh, you know in uh, not a uh, prioritize for them household work has been a priority not just because there's a, a societal obligation and pressure but also because how they uh, have perceived themselves because that's how they've been mentally conditioned and their priorities is never themselves uh, but it is in fact it should be the other way around as we know that if a woman is healthy and strong it will definitely reflect in the rest of the family um when i was born uh, i was born to a um, to my mother who had schizophrenia at that time and uh, she fell very sick and uh, so uh, you know uh, i i was uh, very very isolated right from the beginning and um, i i worked very hard i was very ambitious and uh, i was doing my uh, physics honors from uh, the delhi university hindu college uh but um, uh, because of my circumstances i got married and uh, uh, i really look forward to bringing up my child very well and uh, pursuing my further studies in a big way and uh, you know i was academically very very uh, very aligned academically uh, but uh, my son uh, was diagnosed with autism and uh, that was way back he was born in 1988 uh, many years ago and so um uh, uh, in the beginning i was devastated and 
uh, we didn't have any access to knowledge. Obviously, we all know that in, in 80s and 90s, we didn't have Google or uh, such things. And uh, all I could read at that time was Encyclopedia Britannica. That's what I used to read for information and knowledge or for guidelines. And um, I wrote to my uncle in New Jersey, uh, who sent me uh, a lot of literature because there was hardly any awareness about this uh, disorder in India at that time. And um, it was just very binary in India that a person is either insane or not. <laughs> there were no disorders, there were no spectrums. Uh, people wouldn't think like that. Uh, fortunately, now there has been a great paradigm change. But at that time, it was very, very difficult. And uh, once he sent me the literature, I actually did my education all over again. And I learned that even if you do not have an instinct, you can you can break anything into micro baby steps and learn and conquer every baby step bit by bit. And uh, nothing is truly impossible. So, um, uh, you know, long things cut short. He went on. He, he was told he would not be even able to speak at one point of time. And I really thought he doesn't have the instinct. But then uh, uh, it was a huge, long, massive journey. And then he went on to do his uh, graduation and his post-graduation uh, from uh, London and then from Leeds Metropolitan University eventually. And uh, he did his certifications in multimedia computing. Uh, although not yet uh, uh, employable, but he helps me out in my business as of now. So uh, in that process of learning, unlearning, relearning, reconditioning, reteaching, um, I learned a lot of things. And it was when he was about uh, 15 years old that he, uh, I, I took him to a gym for exercise and uh, uh, you know uh, how they look upon women in India that we were not allowed to do heavyweight training. And uh, I wanted to just uh, push it there that, no, I know about it. And uh, why should I be stopped? And uh, it wasn't necessarily rebellion. But I thought that uh, I wished to take it as a cause that what women's health and fitness uh, should mean to the society, what sports should mean to the society. And uh, I traveled to many countries. I studied about it. I qualified myself. And then um, I competed in uh, you know, national and international bodybuilding contests. And that really <coughs> set the path for hundreds of girls, especially in India. And uh, so today, I get a lot of love from all those girls uh, you know, who uh, uh, who look upon me that you know it's really really possible and i actually started at a later age in fact when i won my overall championship and pro cards i was uh, you know in already in my late 40s so uh, uh, there were a lot of apprehensions about uh, women competing and uh, now we have uh, like hundreds of girls it's, a, it's 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 completely changed especially in the last uh, 5 years um so uh, uh, one thing I wish to say, the essence of this is that even uh, my journey started with just teaching my child a bit and uh, teaching him to exercise, teaching him to study. And uh, here I am, you know, as an example that all these things are possible. And uh, I was being on an international stage and uh, uh, bringing it forward. Fortunately, God has been very kind to me that I have had platforms where I am, you know, able to, um, uh, you know, come forward and talk to a lot of people in the sporting world and, uh, uh, you know, and health and fitness platforms and to, to, to make people realize that um, health and fitness should not be, uh, you know, based on myths and uh, hearsay, you know, you need to educate yourself, uh, go to an educated professional and understand uh, that sports and health and fitness involves uh, biochemistry and uh, psychology, uh, kinesiology, physiology, anatomy, and so on. It's an all encompassing uh, sport. And um, so I have been able to talk about it. 
And so when my little journey started just by teaching my child and doing nothing else for myself, not making a conscious effort to go on social media and get thousands of followers, I was just doing something very tiny in my house in isolation and making trying to excel in it because I wanted it for my child as a mother. And that goes on, uh, that uh, kind of has, uh, you know, um, uh, gone one step ahead on its own, that today hundreds of mothers who have children with autism and they have uh, like two years old and four years old and they feel that they are told again by medical professionals that, uh, you know, you cannot give up your life, uh, just let it be the way it is. And so when they hear about me, uh, lots of parents, they come back to me and um, I'm invited to give talks uh, to parents. Uh, it is extremely gratifying to tell them that, look, this is possible, that a child uh, who, who, you know, maybe uh, God has not really gifted can become this just by a mother's intervention without even any uh, technical knowledge. Uh, but you just have to have the passion. Uh, a, a woman in her 40s can go in her, um, you know, on an international stage, represent her country all alone without the support of a federation, and compete with 20 years old, 20 year old, and win a medal. Um, I'm also a Bharatanatyam dancer. I'm studying it, and I'm doing a research and writing a book on how to uh, converge these things together. Uh, one of the examples I would like to give is that. We have a book called Nati Shastra, and which has the essence of all the four Vedas. And uh, the Indian Council of Cultural Research uh, kind of has, uh, you know, helped <coughs> a lot of scholars from across the world, artists and uh, performers, uh, to come forward and study. Uh, we see that um, uh, the Nati Shastra actually has. Uh, exercises which are similar to the bench press and squats and everything that we do in bodybuilding. Um, uh, so when we have a multi-pronged approach in fitness, when you're doing Bharatanatyam, and I'm also a, a Kalari Payat student, you know, it's a martial art from Kerala, it's an ancient art which was created by Lord Parshuram. So when you, when you get all these things together, um, you know, and there is an amalgamation and convergence in it, and you study it, uh, whereas these arts also have, in a certain sense, yoga and meditation uh, embedded in them. Um, you have something, uh, you know, which is extremely beautiful. So just by being uh, very, very passionate about what you do and loving what you do, you create something new, you study, you research, and then you give it back to the world. You're already a leader without even trying to be a leader. It's the world that comes to you. Um, so uh, my message is that in today's world that we have the uh, support of technology, we have seen that uh, in the last one and a half years, uh, I have actually ended up working a lot more and widening my horizons uh, in today's world that uh, you know, earlier we were spending a lot of time on uh, commutation and, uh, uh, you know, uh, we were restricted to physical presence, but we have understood so well that this is a great possibility and it can actually be done um, even post this unfortunate uh, pandemic. And uh, we have come together, uh, you know, uh, really the, the world is a a global village it's a, it's a, it's just one family and um, i i realized a lot of this from loni that uh, you know when we when we women get together and we talk about um, ourselves we see we have we have the same human emotions they are so universal as a mother as a sister as a daughter we have the same the same uh, human emotions and uh, uh, you know the same apprehensions uh, same struggle uh, same drive to excel and succeed and uh, so we we respect and bow down to uh, each one of us who is contributing in his own respective ways and we support and enhance each other so together we grow uh, that's a great organization and uh, uh, it's amazing work being of course done by dr kalorin makaka because 
uh, we would have just continued to do uh, uh, these in our own little world. Like I'm, I might be very known, very well known in the health and fitness fraternity and my my pers my particular field in India. Uh, but uh, uh, when people from different fields get together, we see that there is uh, a universality in everything the way we work and uh, we, we come across even possibilities of uh, b2b solutions uh, where we can support uh, uh, each other we are leaders we have people who look up to us in our own ways uh, so you know we can really grow together and uh, truly contribute to the world in a much bigger way with all the work and knowledge uh, so it's time uh, to give back uh, to the society and um, I'm, of course, authoring a book right now, working on it. I'm mentoring a lot of my students and my clients. And uh, being an IFBB international judge, I'm the only judge right now in Asia, Southeast Asia, as a woman. And, um, you know, uh, it's very gratifying when women athletes, they come on stage and, uh, you know, uh, they look at me and they smile that, oh, Rita, ma'am is there, so we're fine. It's very, very gratifying. And... Um, also, uh, uh, you know, I just wish to uh, thank you all so much. It's a, a very, very inspiring journey uh, of Dr. Saf Baxi, I must say, very, very inspiring journey. And uh, uh, Dr. Shamila, you're doing tremendous job. Uh, we need that kind of thing in India. I hope we can, you know, work and collaborate together. And, uh, and surviving uh, five heart attacks is, is a huge example. I'm sure that uh, it will give a lot of hope uh, to so many uh, people, you know, who might just lose heart and be scared. Um, uh, I, I just recovered from COVID uh, and I had a, uh, you know, my auto inflammatory immune response was so high that, um, you know, I, I really had to be on steroid. Uh, with all the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the if fortunately I didn't have any lifestyle disorders or comorbidities at all. You know, I've always been um, exceptionally healthy, but uh, sometimes the immune system is so robust that it uh, the body fights back. And uh, so, you know, we have a very strong autoimmune response if you are if you are really healthy inside. So that's the flip side of it. Um, and I really learned about it and I'm actually writing uh, you know, an article in Fitness Guru that would be uh, actually be circulated in some of the hospitals in um, uh, India, uh, you know, as the publisher, the uh, editor has told me. So uh, uh, when you come close to your mortality, you know, the series of emotions that you possibly go through. Uh, having five heart attacks and surviving is indeed a huge, huge example because it would give so much hope that everything is possible. Um, oh, and I really thank you all for having me here. It's a pleasure. I have not prepared today. I've just spoken from my heart and, um, and I'm so delighted to do that. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting us. With your balls of wisdom and struggle and story. Thank you so much, ma'am. And thank, thank you. you for your contribution and your valuable time uh, from your Choco blog timetable and share your insight with us. Thank you so much and congratulations, ma'am, because you are a survivor of COVID-19. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's time for quiz competition, so let's start off. So let's go for quiz competition. Yes, indeed. <laughs> We will start our with Molina. How to train a good leader? He didn't address any speaker. Okay, okay so maybe I'll take this question because somebody has to answer. Uh, well, uh, for being a good leader, it's something that has to come uh, from within, first of all. Uh, when you are excelling in something, you want to reach out and give it back to the world. Uh, it is the confidence that has to uh, come forth, as uh, in, in his talks, uh, Dr. Staff Bhakti has mentioned, that um, 
do you've got to have the confidence to reach out to be able to uh, you know talk and mentor people so uh, I, I, when it comes uh, from the childhood i think uh, you know we have the education philosophy of uh, rabindranath tagore he says that a child must be given complete freedom so that he can uh, be himself himself or herself and uh, that actually generates a lot of confidence coming forward with arts because i have been in performing arts and i know that since the beginning when you come on stage and when you, you are see i have come today unprepared so when you you are on stage that uh, initial hesitation should not be there there should be a desire to reach out to the world and give back what you have learned and sometimes doing something absolutely unconventional should be allowed something uh, i have seen examples where some people started something 100 years ago and at that time it was neglected but in the so little world it just increased and magnified and that was probably carried forward as a legacy and then it expanded later on much much later on and then we look back at history there was some little uh, person in a village who just started it in his own tiny way so uh, definitely i just wish that uh, the, the the first question that came about acceptance that accept a person the way uh, he or she is and let him be as long as he is giving back giving something new and different to the society let the person be himself let a person grow accept that person and then everyone is a leader in himself our next question from manolita uh, as global leader do you approve of long term lockdowns is it really must to equip travelers to undergo rt pcr or serving test at the airport people team to stay in a hotel for 7 days just to wait for the result i think it's for the sir is that for me sure. yeah yes, it's about leadership uh dr rita would you like to answer i've been yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm not i'm not passing the buck but um, especially with covid uh, he is <laughs> yeah having experience covid he is well i do uh, very much approve uh, you see uh, there uh, we have we are in the middle of a pandemic and we all are economic uh, lows and uh, you know losses but right now the priority is to stay alive and we know how uh you know how much uh, this this thing is spreading and uh, it is a danger to your life if you are if you are alive you can do anything later now this is actually a great opportunity for you all to become leaders because we are now we can open uh, you know widen our horizons and we can look at things from different perspectives actually it should be a great great opportunity to become a leader a lot of people in uh, during their travel community commutations they spend so much of time why not have more innovative ideas it's saving us uh, isn't it saving us a lot of money uh, so it depends on you have to reinvent even when there is no lockdown and if at all there was no pandemic ever uh, you would have to uh, recreate at every point of time uh, at every point of time the world is always changing it's forever changing and unfortunately we have this and uh, let me tell you uh, when i got infected for 15 days i had not gone out anywhere at all there was a national championship and then for 15 days i was at home i was studying i was just doing an online exam and then i i, I just uh, you know i had fever so you never know where you get it from and then you are going and spreading it out uh, for a little bit of convenience or for a little bit of money no amount of money is worth it i think the governments are very responsible they have issued guidelines uh, they all know that everybody is suffering they are trying to open up they are trying to help us i think we must definitely follow the guidelines for the question and his suggestion in this well answered by four speaker dr shavala ma'am or uh, adobia ma'am dr sharp sir and dr rita ma'am thank you so much ma'am and sir also and don't forget to uh, our viewers uh, don't forget to collect your e certificate from our website or by the link mentioned below on after session get over and before 
part goodbye let me acknowledge my alumni warm attitude who has so much